Hello everyone. Welcome back to In Conversation With. My name is Sinead McCrohan and I am delighted to be hosting, I believe, episode 16 um, of this webinar series. So if you are a returning viewer, you're very welcome back. And if you have just joined us, this is a webinar that we run every Wednesday evening from four o'clock till five o'clock. And we focus on two undergrad courses in DCU. Um, and we speak to two students who have either studied the course, are currently studying it, or even sometimes we speak to lecturers or academic staff members. Um, and it's your chance to basically tune in and ask uh, live questions to people who are actually doing a course that you may be interested in. So just before we get started, I'll draw your attention to the Q&A feature that is listed below. If you have any questions at all for um, our, our guests, you feel free to, to put them in the Q&A box and we will make sure to um, get them addressed. So whether it's about you know, modules or about career prospects or internships, we will make sure to, um, to get those questions answered for you. So our four o'clock session that'll start in just a moment's time is gonna be with Deirdre Crohan who studies the Bachelor of Education uh, for post-primary. So it, it's to qualify you to teach Gaelga and another language, whether that is French, German or Spanish. And at half past four, we are going to be joined by Fergal McGurk who is a graduate of actuarial maths in DCU. So without further ado, I'm going to welcome Deirdre Crohan into um, the call as a panelist. So. Deirdre, you should get a notification in a minute and it should come through for you. Hello, hey, how, are you? how are you? Good now, how are you? Not too bad at all. Thank you very much for taking the time uh, to come and talk to us. You're not skipping any lectures, are you? No, I'm free this evening, so Susan. <laughs> Good stuff, good stuff. Um, so we have a couple of people who are tuning in live, which is great. So as I said, guys, if you've any questions for Deirdre, please do let us know and uh, she'll do her very best to answer. So as I said, thank you so much for tuning or for, for coming and, and giving us your time. So you're currently studying um, the, the post-primary teaching degree in Gaelga and you're doing it with French, I believe. French, yeah. yeah. So That's if right. I was in six year, Deirdre, and, and maybe you could bring yourself back to uh, your, your six year self, how did you stumble upon this course and how did you end up picking it in the end? Well, I suppose from a young child, I always wanted to be a primary teacher. And then at around fifth year in school, I kind of changed and I wanted to do secondary school teaching. And Gaelga was always my favourite subject in school. So I kind of started leaning towards, I wanted to do Gaelga. And I knew that it wasn't one of those subjects that was done kind of as a concurrent teaching, like a lot of the, we'll say, practical subjects are. Mm -hmm. So I started just researching on Qualifax and Greer's Court and then places. And I happened to come across this course in UL, this Gaelga and French course, which was brand new in UL this year. And I was researching that. And then after a while, I stumbled upon it in DCU. I never even knew it existed there. And that's when I started kind of looking into it more. And I decided, yeah, maybe, you know, French. I, I loved French in school as well. And then I kind of was doing research on the differences in the courses between the two places. And I suppose DCU really appealed to me because of their structure of the school placement. So in this course, you go on placement in second year, third year and fourth year, whereas when in other colleges, you only go in second and fourth year. And I just felt the more time you have on school placement, the better you'd feel going out. And looking off last oh, February, actually in the midterm break in school, shortly before lockdown, my mother and I decided we'd take a trip up to see the campus, Pat's campus. Um, I, I know a girl there who is doing primary teaching, so she showed me around her room and stuff. And it was a day that college was on, so it was a real experience. And I just fell in love with the place. I loved the atmosphere. It was real. It was almost like Pat's campus is always like a school, you know, it's real um, and real homely. And then that was kind of my decision made for me then. I said, yeah, I'm going to go to DCU. It is. Now you're dead right about St. Pat's. There's a lovely kind of school and home kind of feel to it. Um, and for students who are listening in and maybe aren't aware that DCU actually has three academic campuses. So you can be based on St. Pat's is predominantly teaching related degrees. So whether it's like early child education or primary school or secondary school, you'll have a lot of lectures down there. Then Glasnevin is kind of the other faculty. So like engineering, computing, science and health, business, humanities, that's all on, on Glass and Evan. And we also have the All Hollows as well, which isn't too far from St. Pat's here, just not right. It's just uh, stones throw away, yeah. but you can sprint over there within a couple of seconds. Um, so you you said you wanted to be a teacher and, and you kind of enjoyed languages then. 
Um, what is it like to study two languages in, in great detail? Is that something that you, you were prepared for coming into the course? Um, it would have been, yeah. And I just mentioned one thing there about the campuses while we're talking about it. A really unique aspect of this course is that it's actually delivered on your on the Glasnevin campus and the St. Patrick's campus. So I think that, that that's a really interesting part of it as well, that you get the experience of the two campuses. Mm -hmm. I suppose in, like, I've always been a language person. It's always been my strong point. I was always useless at maths. Um, and I always had a great interest in languages. And I suppose... It's always, you know, in the back of your mind, oh, you know, it's going to be heavy, like with the two languages. But I think you kind of get used to it. And I think the biggest difference between school and first year in college is probably you're just you, getting used to using the language in a more daily, daily use, uh, applying it to your actual life. Whereas in school, you're just learning the language for the leave and cert exam. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, and I think for us as well, because our orals were cancelled, a lot of my, we'll say, for, uh, classmates in first year, we were worried that because we hadn't spoken, we hadn't spoken our French or Spanish or German or Welsh since last March. So that was a worry for us that how were we going to get on? We were a long term out of practice. But I mean, you, you just get back into it and you just get better every day by speaking it. Yeah, exactly. And um, for someone who's looking into the course, maybe thinking about about um, requirements. So you do need you to H3 in your Gaelga and, and a H3 in, in your in your European language. Isn't that right? Yeah. yeah so so you, can right. kinda, you can kind of build yeah. you can kind of build on that then upon entry because you have a bulk of it. But great to know that it is kind of more focused on how you'd use the language because you're dead right. I mean, anyone who's who's experienced um, kind of do, doing oral examinations in in secondary school like you're just learning things off off and just to ha just to say it um as opposed to actually thinking okay yeah. i need this to whether to work in a business or work in a school or work you know yeah. anywhere you do need those like kind of the specific terminology so again there is a q a function guys if you do want to ask um deirdre anything in particular so um you're just finishing up first year this year aren't you in, in, in a couple of weeks time um could you tell us a bit about what you've learned <coughs> in terms of like modules in first year and then would you know much about kind of how that will change in year two three and four yeah so i suppose in in the first semester of first year um the main content we'll say of the course is based around your languages so you have your french you've your french or your german or your spanish and your guelga and we did a little bit of then we'll say education theories psychology of education philosophy of education in the first semester and then since the second semester started it's been a lot more uh, we've been doing a lot more work on actual your application in the classroom actual teaching like currently now we're doing a module called micro teaching so that's where we teach each other our peers we teach each other and we give each other feedback so we act as a first year class for each other um and of course you still have your your you're doing your languages all the time on the side as well and you're trying to bring stuff together so as you're learning stuff in your language lectures you're always thinking in the back of your head when i have to teach this how how am i going to teach this and i think that's a really interesting part of it that the two are always going along each other at the same time that while you're learning it you're also thinking how am i going to teach this in four years time yeah of course because as you said it's it's a language teaching degree so not only do you have to have the knowledge for yourself but you actually have to as you said like pretend you're a first year student and think okay how how would i be able to you know to comprehend this um, no, no, all, all very interesting. So you're kind of prepping almost for school placement, like not quite just at the minute. But could you tell me a little bit about like how that placement will work? Do you know much about kind of how, like, will you have to have an inspector, like lesson plans? How will all that end up? So we'll say our first t uh, school placement now will be next, we'll say second, at the start of second semester of second year. So this time next year, we'll just be finishing it. We'll have done it in January and February, hopefully. And um, that's for five weeks in second year. So usually on your placement in second year, you get to, you, you get to choose what school you go to. So a lot of students will go back to their old secondary school just because you're familiar with the building, you're familiar with the teachers there and they'll be, they'll be able to help you on your first placement. And you'll have tutors who come out maybe once or twice, obviously your lecturers who will be your tutors, and they'll just sit, and, sit in your class and give you feedback and have a look at your lesson plans, making sure you're getting on okay. 
and it's really emphasized that you're not just in the school to teach you're in the school to really immerse yourself in the school environment so you have to get involved in extracurricular homework club teams um football teams all that kind of thing and then in third year you have you have your second school placement um, which takes place in the first semester of third year that's five weeks again and then you have 15 weeks in fourth year and on both them placements dcu place us in a school um, and again you'll have your tutors come out make sure you're doing okay your lesson plans and all the time you'll be building on you'll have more hours in the week you'll be moving up you start off with first year's classes you move up to the senior classes and that kind of thing yeah, so I mean, you will have a wealth of experience by the time you finish in this course um, and, and you'll be like a newly qualified teacher. So you can go ahead and start teaching straight away. Um, I, I'd assume that's kind of the plan for you at the minute. But would you know of many people or have you heard of people who have maybe gone down a different route after they have, have done this course? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, this course is so unique in the fact that you will qualify, you'll have three degrees, essentially, you'll have your Guelga degree, your modern language degree, be it French, Spanish or German, and you'll also have an education degree. So I mean, your the world is your oyster at that stage. I know a lot of people you have, you have the option there of if you've Guelga, you know, there, the, there's loads of loads of jobs in the country for Guelga, you have your translating, media, journalism, TG Cahar, of course, then you can go and work in your country that you have the language for. Mm -hmm. So there's all them options. And even if you do go into education, initially, you still have the you still have the qualifications of the other of your languages as well. So you can branch off and do something different after a few years. Yeah, no, that, that's perfect, because for someone who maybe is listening and is thinking, yeah, I'd like to be a te teacher, but I'm not sure if it's exactly what I'd want to do forever, or maybe yeah. I want to travel. As you said, you're not just qualifying to be a teacher, like you have a very high level of two languages. Um, and of course, you can, yeah. go, you can go wherever. There is, and I say this is up in the air at the minute, just in, in this given year, but there is an option to study abroad, isn't there, in this course? There is, yeah. So... In this course, you have your Gwaeltuk placement and you also have an Erasmus placement. So the Gwaeltuk placement is two months. You don't have to do the two months all at once, but as long as the at the end of your four years, you have two months completed in the Gwaeltuk, then that covers you for the teaching council to be able to teach Gwaelga. And then your Erasmus placement, Erasmus placement takes place in the second semester of third year. Um, so you go to a DCU partner university in either... France, Spanish or G Spain or Germany or one of those in a country that speaks their languages mm -hmm. and you just spend time there, go to classes in that university, immerse yourself in the language and a lot of students then would choose to actually stay on into the summer um, to work and of course practice more of the language and then come back in September to go into your final year then. Mm -hmm. So even for someone who is passionate about languages and wants to travel, uh, you can do it within this course, like not only, as you said, go to the Gale Talk for a while, but actually study abroad. And again, not that's not often associated with many teaching degrees in Ireland. So it, it, it's a great, like like that, that. yeah, like it's, it's a great gem to know. And, and again, for anyone who's just entered, there is a Q&A function there if you want to ask Deirdre anything. Um, we might take a step away from, from the course just for a second, because I'd love to ask you about your experience um as, as a first year kind of during this pandemic and um, how have you found the online learning side of things and getting that kind of individual attention from lecturers or tutors so obviously yeah it's been a unique experience um or personally now in our course we haven't been on campus at all just because every our course can all be delivered online um but i have to say i mean dcu have been absolutely fantastic for that connection, like the live classes. I know I have friends from school that are in other colleges and a lot of their classes have been pre-recorded and they haven't had that, um, that live connection. Like in our classes, our classes are small. There's only about 12 of us in any lecture. Um, and we have that live conversation with our lecturer all the time. And it's it's brilliant, it really is. It's, it's like, it's, it's as close to being in a lecture hall as is possible. And I really hats off to DCU for that because it's not the same everywhere. And we are lucky that we, that we have that opportunity that when we go to 
when, when we go into campus hopefully uh, next year we'll actually know what our lecturers look like and we'll know what they sound like and we'll have that relationship built with them already because we do live lectures all the time yeah it's great to hear that that you had such a positive experience and I know like different people have, have found it just differently but between like having to go on to campus or just having online lectures or using breakout rooms um, but as you said fingers crossed and, and with the vaccine rollout and everything we hope to be close to normal next year you know we're just obviously guided by guided by public health guidelines as much as we can but um, it's nice to hear that, that you did have kind of a good experience of it so far and um, when you are online and um, how many hours a week would you have lectures for so I have I can just go through my time really quickly it's probably the easiest so on I've I'm actually off on a Monday I have no lectures on a Monday then on a Tuesday morning I have two 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 hour lectures on a Tuesday morning so that's four hours on a Tuesday I've one on a one lecture on a Wednesday morning one two on a Thursday and one on a Friday so it's about maybe 10 hours a week live max um so it's fine it's 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 very manageable like and it's nice that they're live as well because for me I would find it's much more it's much more motivating that you know you're going to go on you're going to see your classmates you're going into breakout rooms you're going to actually have a conversation it's not just pre-recorded where there's no one to talk to yeah no it, it's very engaging and as you said motivating to go on because I'm sure um people we're all craving to talk to someone new <laughs> that, that's that's not in our household um so no that, that's fantastic and as I said for anyone who's just entered the call there is a Q&A function there if you do want to ask Deirdre anything um Deirdre for someone who's in sixth year at the minute because I like you're not long from sixth year yourself um do you have any advice for them whether that's in relation to looking up different colleges and courses you know research on modules or just sixth year in general and any words of wisdom for our listeners the biggest piece of advice I could give is it will all work out in the end and at this stage I'll be saying is Get, start getting your bits of information together. Don't worry about CAO. Don't worry about, oh my God, what am I going to put down on the 1st of July? Just now start looking and say, okay, I'm interested in this. Um, go to virtual open days. Look up um, look up the structure of courses. It's really important to know what, what the structure of the course is. Because for me, again, I picked ECU because of the school placement structure. That's what, what did it for me. And um, yeah, I would say do your research and everything, it always works out in the end. And, you know, you will be where you want to be in, in a few months time. Absolutely. Yeah. And we're putting as much content online as we can for, um, for prospective students. So, you know, things like this to have live conversations with students or anything on dcu.ie forward slash CAO is really applicable. You know, if you want to learn about courses or watch back um, recordings from open days or we'll have our next open day in spring on the 17th of April it's a Saturday um, for people to tune in and and maybe Deirdre will be back doing a presentation about this course but you know it's, it's just a nice way to really gather that information um, it's really important to make sure you go to the open days and all that kind of thing gather all the information you possibly can and arm yourself with everything you have to be able to make that decision because it makes all the difference when you have all the information together and you know that you've confidence in your own decision because you've 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 done all the research exactly and even and Deirdre got lucky in that she got to uh, leg it up to St Pat's before before the the the, the lockdown hit but um you know we, we've created campus tour videos so that you can see what our campuses look like and, and you can message ambassadors who are who are studying in St Pat's to see what it's like so yeah as many as many things as we can cover we're trying to do that and let us know if there's an area that that you want us to cover and there's no questions coming in in relation to uh, the course at the minute Deirdre I think you're, you're knocking it out of the park in terms of uh, supplying information and um, maybe just before we let you go in in your short first year that you've had in DCU is there a particular highlight that that, that you'll you'll remember from your first year of this course? Uh, there's probably a few I know um, probably a lot of my highlights have probably been extracurricular stuff um, back early in the semester, I actually did a referees course. I play ladies Gaelic football and DCU actually put on a free ladies referee course. So I actually qualified as a referee for nothing, for, for no money. Yeah, so that was great. And I'd probably say then 
definitely my highlight has been getting involved with this student recruitment and you know helping because I know how it I felt to be in sixth year last year and you know what you really need those answers to them questions which of course I was able to get but I'm really passionate about that about helping other people make their decisions and that's definitely been a highlight for me getting involved with this and yeah helping other people to get to make their decision to come to DCU. Yeah, and, and thank you for, for getting so involved. And um, that is really the core of, you know, the, the student helper or the student ambassador program is that you're there to, you know, provide guidance and support. And, you know, you're not there to just pretend everything is absolutely sunshine all the time. Like, you'll be honest, if, if, if a module is hard, you'll, yeah. you'll say it's hard. If you're find on, finding online learning difficult, you'll say that it's difficult. But it's just because because you know what it's like to be in that position of, of a six year or whoever who is just confused about options and, and it's nice that you're kind of willing willing to help and that's what all of our ambassadors are, are, are like in dcu and um, so just just maybe before we go if you want to cover a little bit about that clubs and, and then club and society aspect of college and um, because you have managed to get involved and um, you know even even through the pandemic so did you do much with with the gaelic football or, or did you kind of expand to other societies as well so obviously I did join the Gaelic Football Club, but obviously I'm not up in Dublin. So that's just kind of, they, we do do like uh, quizzes and Zooms and that kind of thing, but obviously we can't actually play at the moment. Um, but I'm also involved obviously with the Gaelga uh, Society and the French Society. So they just hold, um, we'll say on a way, on this evening now on a Wednesday evening, the French Society hold French chats. So we just go on from students from fourth year to first year of all different levels and we just go in and chat very informal with there to help each other chat about current you know what's going on in the world in college in our lives what are we finding hard and the um students who are very fluent in french help the likes of us who are maybe struggling with something um and then i've got involved with other societies as well the tea society because i love tea um drama there's lots of so many societies and there's something for everyone and i really would say um even in your lectures as well just take that leap and just say hello to someone just you know really open yourself up to someone especially in breakout rooms because you have an opportunity there now hopefully come this time next we won't be on breakout rooms anymore but even when you are in a in a lecture hall or on campus and you someone is in your class you know just take that leap and say how are you how are you finding the module and you know you really that is how you make friends and everyone's in the same boat when you go into first year everyone is worrying about making friends is the is the lecture going to be hard how's the course going to be but once you just get into the swing of things it all just falls into place anyway yeah, that, that's fantastic advice. And, and we hear it quite frequently on, on this series is to just get involved. And, and if people have any regrets or graduates, they always say, I just wish I did more. So here's that warning for, for anyone who, who hasn't uh, begun in, in college yet or, or anything like that. Um, it's absolutely worth just getting involved in everything. Or even as Deirdre mentioned, like you can get involved in things that actually assist your course, like, um, you know, French society or, or the, the Gaelic society, and you can actually get together and and improve not only like or you know get involved in something you're interested in but also improve uh, your, your own skills and, and, and knowledge of the language like that is just it's a win on, on it for everyone <laughs> that's absolutely perfect and before I let Deirdre go if there are any questions please do throw them into the chat and um, one that I might just ask myself because I, I don't know the answer to it is and um, how would you often be uh, assessed for this course is it a lot of exams or is it more continuous assessment and essays so all of first year is actually continuous assessment. So we had no exams at Christmas and we have none in May. Um, so it's a lot of assignments all the time, nothing difficult, but really a lot, lots of variation. So we do loads of making videos, recording ourselves speaking, making infographics, presentations, PowerPoints, all that kind of thing. It's very rarely your boring typical essay it's that real variation that I suppose is preparing us for when we do go into a classroom. Um, and so it's it's a continuous assessment, but it's broken down nicely over the semester and every module. So you're never under too much pressure as long as you just keep on top of things. It's grand, really. For sure, for sure. Um, Deirdre, thank you so, so much for joining us and in conversation with, um, for anyone who maybe is telling a friend about this or anything, we are here every Wednesday and this session is recorded as well and we'll be able, be able to put it on our website. So if someone does want to watch it back and has any queries, they can get in touch. But Deirdre, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so much for that thank insight. You. I'm going to 
put you back into the role of the attendee now. Um, but everyone, that was Deirdre Crohan uh, with a fantastic overview of um, the, the post-primary school teaching for Gaelga and then you pair it with the language, so uh, French, German or Spanish. So at half past four, I'm going to be welcoming Fergal McGurk into the call who studied actuarial maths um, and has now graduated from DCU and is out in the workforce. Um, so what I'll just do is I'll just um, mute myself and turn off my video for a minute and I'll see you guys back here at half past to welcome Fergal. Hello everyone, uh, back from that little quick break. Um, if you have just joined the call, you're very welcome. My name is Sinead McCrohan and I am delighted to be hosting, I think episode 16 of In Conversation With, and this is part two. So at four o'clock, we were joined by um, the lovely Deirdre Crohan, who was able to talk to us about um, the Bachelor of Education for post-primary to teach Gaelga with French, German or Spanish. And now in just a second time, I will add uh, Fergal McGurk into the call, who is a graduate of actuarial maths in DCU. So just before we get started, as I said, for anyone who's just joined the call, there is a Q&A function um, at the bottom of your kind of Zoom tab there. And if you have any questions for Fergal as we have our conversation, please do let us know and we'll make sure to cover it. So without wasting any more time, I will promote Fergal to a panelist and we can get started. Please wait. Ah, it's loading now. Give it another second. Hello, sorry. Virgil, <laughs> how are you? You gave me a fright there. I thought you I thought you legged it. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Just as soon as you said, uh, I'm going to let Fergal join now, it was like, OK, let's just turn it off and come back in for some reason. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. How are you keeping yourself? Oh, grand, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just done work there, so busy time, you know? I know, I know. I think we're all flat out, even with the pandemic. No rest for the wicked. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day and, and your busy work day to kind of fit, finish up your day with us uh, in DCU. It, it's great to have a graduate come back and be able to give some very valuable insights. So we have a lot of people on the call at the minute who have an interest in actuarial maths. So hopefully we'll have loads of questions for you, Fergal. Um, I suppose if we take it right back and maybe we'll work then in chronological order, uh, yeah. sixth year Fergal, where was he, what was he thinking in terms of CAO and, and what path to take? Um, God, good question, Jesus, that's a long time ago. Um, <laughs> yeah, like at the time, that's just, I really enjoyed business and maths in uh, secondary school. So in fact, my first choice was actually to do global business actually in DCU. Uh, I think it was USA because I got I was told you get to go to USA for two years so at the time I was like oh my god I want to go to USA for two years but then I uh, didn't actually get the points for there but um, I got DCU actuarial mathematics uh, which was my second choice I think yeah nearly there anyway. uh, but it was always my plan to come to DCU if that makes sense I think like my first mm -hmm. five to six choices was a DCU related one and then like the other actuarial maths like that that can be done in like the other colleges were like my six to eight ten choice so no yeah it was always like the dcu my brother went to dcu i don't know about you but like when you had to do like uh romeo and juliet or king Lear or something for the english you're always brought up to the helix yeah and yeah sit through that for three hours so i always like dcu was like the one college i knew of and being from monaghan it's like on the easy side of the motorway so it's very <laughs> easy to get this so <laughs> that was one of the main reasons but yeah no it was um I basically I wanted to do something with business class maths and uh, I didn't want to be a math teacher I didn't want to be a teacher if that makes sense so and then mm -hmm. what else can you do with maths and like in all fairness like when I before I came to DCU if you had asked me what actuarial or what an actuary was I wouldn't have a clue I just wanted to do it because I knew it was maths related if that makes sense mm -hmm. and to be honest with you until you you could nearly ask me now what an actuary is and I could give you a different answer every time if you know what I mean so it's yeah. definitely a very broad range Thing, if that makes sense but yeah that's where I was and uh, I was very glad and happy then to actually get into it because I when I actually got into college and I got talking to a few business students I realized business wasn't for me actually and the math route of it was my way so I was actually very happy that I didn't get my first choice and end up taking like a, a, one of the lower choices like so 
yeah it, it's, it's great to like, hear it's great to hear that it worked out and, and even to hear like the kind of motivations behind it because like you know as you mentioned there's so many things that go into it in terms of transport and location and the feel of the college like the okay. vibe is always something you hear coming up at DCU like there's something about the energy yeah. in it that a lot of students like and, and they're all very important elements that come into it when picking a university it's not just the course you know clubs and societies and anything like that and um, but if we do try and answer that difficult question Fergal of what what is an actuary like what is actuarial maths how would you kind of pitch that to someone who's never heard of it before yeah okay, I was actually thinking about this before uh this was like I was planning an answer but um there's definitely like so the two words are like quite separate and you have to combine together if that makes sense so like obviously the maths end of it is pretty obvious for anyone who does maths you need to be very very good at maths you need to uh I wouldn't say you don't need to enjoy maths, but you definitely need to have an interest in it, if that makes sense. Like you don't have mm. to like like it, but you got to be like, oh, that's actually kind of cool when you figure it up. And I like, oh, that's actually kind of cool that like, you can do that with maths. Mm. But like, you don't have to be like a big maths nerd, if that makes sense. Happens out that I am a big maths nerd, so it worked out <laughs> for me. Like, you definitely, um, you definitely need to like be comfortable with maths and that you're happy to do it. And then the actually is, I always try and say it in a really harsh way but basically like if you were to sum it up uh most actuaries are trying to figure out when someone's going to die and how much money we have to pay them basically if that makes sense it's a very crude way of putting it but um uh, it's basically to do with risk so anything where there's a risk involved and act and risk and money uh, and uh, an actuary would come in so if you know I mean so if you are uh, investing into certain areas uh, the actuary would come in and you'd be like how much money do you have, does the business have to have to make sure if the investments go poorly that they can still pay people back or again like the life insurance where i'm working right now it's like you're trying to figure out like what products do i need does customers want and like how, so like basically like for a pension if you know what i mean so like mm. okay so they want a pension when they're 65 um but in a few years time we're all living longer you might actually not want a pension until you're 70 and then how long are you going to live after that so you're trying to make sure that person has enough money and the company has enough money to pay it so like that's a very specific example, but like you can go into anything. You can go into general insurance, anything to do with money and anything to do with risk, which is basically anything an actuary can do it, if that makes sense. Yeah, that, that, that's a fantastic way of putting it. And, and it, some great examples there for students who are kind of considering taking that path to kind of, OK, I know I can go into this or or, or whatever area. So uh, for example, if we were to look at kind of the, the four year long course, um, what sort of yeah. things are you learning in first year and, and where do you end up then in fourth year? Yeah, so it's definitely, uh, I would definitely say like the first year and a half, maybe even the first two years, are very much like the maths part of the side of it, if that makes sense. So you really have to learn the fundamentals of maths. So like in the first semester, first year, like on the maths end, you're really fine tuning uh, the maths you've already learned in the even circuit. Everybody needs to be up to a very certain level. In all fairness, you do need, I mean, it's, well, it's different now. Like for my even search, you had to have a B3 or higher. So whatever that is in the. Yeah, in the I, I, I believe it's a H3 at the minute. Yeah, yeah so, so quite like a high you, level. You, yeah, so you do need a good comps to be in it. So basically, the first year is definitely like fine tuning your maths and like you're starting then to progress into uh, probability and statistics quite an awful lot. You do probability and statistics throughout your four years. That's basically a lot of the work is to probability and statistics. And then you're also. Uh, getting introduced to computer coding so um i wouldn't say you know you're definitely not like developing apps or stuff like that but you definitely you're you're definitely like going into the area of you need to understand how to bring data together and that's how you do it through coding so in the first the two main things i'd say in first year would be a good development of your coding skills which is i think uh, dcu is doing or now so if any of the coding nerds are there you're doing or and i think maybe Python, I'm not fully sure, and I can't fully remember now myself, but then um, as, you, ah, as you go on in the years, um, you're definitely, your maths gets more tailored towards the actuarial job, if that makes sense, so mm. all the maths that you've learned, so you've learned calculus, you've learned probability, you've learned statistics, and you're probably like, why the hell am I learning this, but then when you go into second and third year, you're getting it applied to actual actuarial functions, if that makes sense, so I definitely say to anyone in first year, you're like, I don't understand, like, if you fit, completed first year, you're like, I still don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what this is. You're like, well, no one did actually. So once you get into second year and third year, you end up like saying, oh, this is why we learned this, because this is how we do this, if that makes sense. And then in third year, you have your interplacement. I know we, um, so that's basically from January till the end of summer. So 
that would be your second semester of third year and the whole of the summer. Mm -hmm. So um, that's basically like where you definitely get to apply all this maths you've learned into an actual workplace environment. And uh, definitely for me after that, like, because even up to the third year now, so I've been studying this course for three years, still hadn't a full clue of what was actually being asked me, if that makes sense. But once you got into the work environment and you were like, and you just got a couple of months into it, it does take a couple of months to get used to it, but once you're into it, you're like, oh, now I understand why I had to learn this random uh, random stuff, uh, like in relation to calculus, sorry, it's about the curse there nearly. Um, and <laughs> then, uh, yeah, and then, but, and then apply that. And then again, in fourth year then, once you come back from work placement, you definitely, like it's definitely like down to actual actuarial concepts. And it's so much easier to learn once you've had the work placement because you can apply what you've le- like what you've done in work. You're like, oh, I understand why I'm learning this, and I think that's the main thing for actuarial maths. It's like definitely, it's probably one of the hardest courses in DCA to be honest with you. I'm not trying to be, not trying to put anybody off. It's definitely the most time-consuming one. Um, but once you get into the stage of you finally understand why you're doing everything, it becomes a lot easier to learn it if that makes sense, and you're happy to do it then. But it definitely like so like. It does take a while to get your foot into the door and like don't be like if you're not liking it after a month or two i would say well wait a year till you finally understand what's happened and then you probably come to realize like that was definitely it for me if that makes sense like once i finally realized what it meant then i liked it if that yeah sense. no and, and that's a great piece of advice and and a, a very good example as to why we run these webinars with cur- graduates or current students it's because like what would you have liked to have known going into it okay you would like to have known that first year can be general second year can be general you might be questioning when is the thing that I want to happen like when is that going to occur but in in a lot of courses in DCU you do have to start off general because bearing in mind like most students are coming from um you know not having been to college before so you really need to get those basic understandings before you can progress into doing the the fancy things um so, so it's great to know that can I be nosy and ask more about your intra? What sort of jobs were you doing on your intra? Because there's often a misconception that internships, it's like you'd be making coffee and you'd be printing. But in DCU, like it really, like these are internships and you have real responsibilities and you're dealing with, in your case, probably real money and real yeah. people. So what was that like? Stress, stress aside. Uh, yeah, sure. Sometimes I wish I was making coffee nearly. Uh, but no, it was definitely... <laughs> It was um, so I basically had my um, placement in Irish Life, and that's actually where I got my job from. So I actually have got employed from my work placement, um, and like it's definitely a hands-on approach. Like I think a lot the actuary community is actually quite small, if that makes sense. So like everybody that's everybody that you're working with has been to college themselves and have done your course course or have done a similar course in another college so everybody like understands each other and like everybody knows what like you can do everybody knows that like if you've been the third year of actuary maths you're smart enough to handle certain situations like so they're not Mm. making you um take notes of meetings well actually they do but like that everybody has to do that but um, you're definitely being applied. Like for me, I was um, working within one company of Irish Life. And like we were dealing with basically like, um, oh, actually, I don't know how much I'm allowed to say, but um, we, were yeah, dealing with, we were dealing with a lot of stuff like to do with like tax, to do with uh, investments, to do with policy holders. So like for me, actually, then there's uh, this thing called commission. So you will get used to commission anyone who's an actuary. And like my, I actually got, put on as the actuary lead in this after three months so like I had my work placement and then for the last five months I actually was the lead actuary and actually turns out um, on this project so like you're definitely uh, and even talking to my friends like because a lot of people get employed in Irish life for the work placement and every other company like it's definitely like you're not there to um, socialize if that makes you are there to socialize but you're definitely there to like learn it and like everybody coming back this is the one thing that I did notice everybody coming back into fourth year knew what they wanted to do then okay. if that makes sense where before intra or before your work placement you're sitting there kind of like oh, I don't know where I want to go what I want to do if that makes sense but as soon as you're done you know you like it the majority of us did has has did enjoy it like and a lot of us most of us are employed now as an actuary there's some people who's moved over to like investments or something like that which is very similar so like you're definitely on the same path and you're yeah you're definitely like 
yeah I've never made a coffee once that when I was there maybe someone made a coffee for me nearly that time that time was <laughs> yeah, <worth forgiving. laughs> yeah it, it's, it's just nice to hear from students that really had like real responsibilities and and you get that experience because otherwise there's no point in doing it really is there if you're just going to arrive back and, and and not know anything extra you know what, what's the point yeah, in it definitely. and a great point that you mentioned as well is is actually establishing what you like and what you dislike because better you find out during you know an eight month internship than you know signing a two-year contract somewhere exactly. and then go oh I actually don't really like this so you know for someone who's maybe anxious about an internship like sure just try you know it's, it's only the longest it's ever going to be is a year in DCU and then you know you're you're back to college so it's 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 an opportunity more so than something to be scared of um and exactly. you know yeah it's, it's maybe a bit thrown in the deep end in terms of like hey you step into the workforce and you've never done it before but that's how you learn and then as you oh, mentioned definitely. as well it starts to kind of tie up you're going oh that's why I learned that thing oh this and then and you see it in action because sometimes it's hard in college to really as you said join the dots as to why why you're doing this thing all together exactly. just say for anyone who's joined there is that Q&A function if you want to ask Fergal anything uh, in particular about the course um while people but are maybe having to think um you, you mentioned that this is one of the, the busiest kind of courses that you can do in dcu yet you still manage to be really involved in college life um, and yeah. do you want to tell us a little bit about that just just i suppose to show students that you can be in a super busy course and also get involved in in outside of lectures definitely uh, and to be honest with you i'd say you have to nearly um just what the course it is i know speaking to a few other people who finished up in college who didn't get involved in other stuff like so the only were involved with the actuarial course like the their college experience like wasn't memorable to them if that makes sense because like I'm not trying to put anybody off but like when you're studying actuary you have about 30 hours of lectures a week if not more and you're in the library from week six onwards studying so like um you have about five exams every semester if not more um and like you're definitely like you're under pressure you really are under pressure like and it's because like it is a difficult job and like you do get compensated for it when you like leave but like you do have to put the work in yourself mm -hmm. and like you're not even qualified when you're only half qualified basically when you finish college and that's in every college like so you, you have to do work with and well sorry I, I go back and um, so for me then I got heavily involved in a lot of society so there actually is an actuarial it's called the fan stock so it's financial and actuarial mathematics because there's two kind of courses very similar to each other um who are outside and that's really good because all of the four years are part of that if that makes sense so if you're a first year you get to talk to the third and fourth years and like you do get to hear their opinions as well and in all fairness like these are the people you're going to be working with in a few years time so like just because you're a first year now in five or six years time you're going to be working at the same level as a person who was in fourth year and you thought they were like miles ahead of you but you're on the same level um, and then i got heavily involved in dc lgbta um, probably uh, the thing is I actually think about this later when someone asks me what do I think about when I think about college I think about LGBTA like I forget you know, that I studied in college even though I was studying non-stop in college because like it just was what I found most interesting I really that's where most of my friends come from is from LGBTA and um, they're doing DC Drag Race tomorrow if anybody wants to buy a ticket um, <laughs> that's fantastic I didn't know that I'll definitely but, have to tune yeah, in yeah but no it's definitely it was definitely a major thing for me and I would definitely suggest to anybody like it doesn't have to be LGBTA or even the actuarial stock but like find a sock there's I think there's 140 150 clubs and societies in DC you can find something that you enjoy and I would definitely tell anybody that you probably do need it to get a break from DCU because if you just keep going to DCU, going into the lecture halls or going to the library and you do nothing else, you grow to not like it. You grow to not, and like, who would like it? Because like, that's tough work. But mm -hmm. if you have something else separate in DCU, it makes your life so much easier. And like, honestly, like, honestly, like when people ask me, I studied so much every day, most of the time for the four years. And honestly, I completely forgot about that because of, the clubs and societies for DCU or like the social aspect of it and like just so to give everybody a heads up like once you've done your last exam obviously like every year the actuaries like we're like the last ones in the library because our last exam was always the last day of the of the of the two two weeks of exams and we take over new bar uh, with the <laughs> student bar there and we have the best time ever and honestly like it's worth it in the end like and you you grow some friendships in the library because you just see everybody else suffering as much as you studying so as soon as you see yeah. someone else study like you just have this bond with people and you'll never get over it. but no definitely like um I would tell people you're doing college wrong if you're not doing something else other than your actual college course if that makes sense
You're dead right. And, and it makes for a lovely break, as you mentioned, between whether it's study sessions or a night off. And, and you want to enjoy that experience. And, and even though, you know, your exams obviously are very important and, and getting your degree is, is priority, but you'll become a, a much well-rounded person by doing these other things and, and making those connections and getting experience doing something for, in your case, it isn't just maths, you know? Definitely. And can I ask you just, can I ask that? And then I ask you just for after that, I, like the few interviews I had for my intro and then for like my actual job, like you're going in as just as good as everybody else when it comes to college. Like if anyone who's survived actuarial maths in college, everybody knows you're good at that, if that makes sense. You need something else to like, so the majority of the time, my interview would be like 30 minutes long and 20 minute, minutes, I'd be talking about clubs and societies in DCU, if that makes sense, and, and how I got involved in that. And like, did they say, oh, you might even say, oh yeah, I see you passed your exams. Don't, don't even mention exams, because they see that in the CV already. They don't, they don't care if you got there, that's fine, but you need something else to say like, oh, I'm also um, sociable. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it's about differentiating yourself because as you mentioned, whether it's actuarial maths, whether it's business engineering, whatever course you do, there are going to be hundreds of other people probably graduating with that degree, be it from DCU alone or from a combination of other universities. Definitely. And having that club and society involvement or committee, anything like that will give you just something to make you different and you can talk about and as you said you're social you have communication skills those kind of transferable skills that you can't really teach like you can't learn that by sitting in a lecture you actually have to go out and and, and do things and um, just before we finish up guys just remember there is that Q&A function if you do want to ask and um, Fergal anything in particular can I ask and um, just before we're finishing up in terms of the direction that you took throughout the course did you kind of enter the course knowing that you wanted to work where you're working now or did that kind of change as the years went on? Yeah, no, I had no notion. Honest to God, I was as clueless as anybody coming into college. I had no idea what was going on. I remember when the lecturer, like the, our course coordinator, first spoke to us to talk, start talking to us about the actuarial exams. And I honestly was sitting there being like, what are, what are they? I literally hadn't a clue. Like I was, <laughs> I was so out of the blue. Like I just wanted to go to DCU. That was my thing. And I wanted to do maths. And this happened to be this, the two things <laughs> joined together. Um, so, and like even at that, like, people like I the amount of people and I want to say I did want to say this before we finish up but like don't be afraid to put it down you can change so easily in college if you don't like it you can change it is a very easy thing to do like I, I know a lot of the actuaries in first year switched over to accounting and finance in DCU quite quickly and like it was I think it was like smitten one form it was very easy to do so like don't be afraid to try it I would definitely say go for more towards these kind of courses than go towards art courses I think arts is very too broad you need to narrow it down and go from there but that's just my own opinion but um no definitely like um i'd say honestly i'd say like if i had been in my workplace and had I been in a different company i probably would have ended up going probably to that company and mm. um, but like uh because right now as an actuary like basically i'm only half qualified as an actuary at the minute so like you still have a three or four more years of where you have to do work placement basically and exams at the same time so after them four years, you're gonna you're gonna know an awful lot more about the actual industry for actuaries. So then that's when you start making like your actual like this is my career choice. So like, like right now I I can go wherever nearly at the minute. Like hmm. but um, after a few years I'll probably have to decide. But at the minute I'm very happy with life insurance. Um, but like you can easily move to general insurance, move to investments, you move to banking, anything to do with money and anything to do with the risk of losing money and actually can be employed there. Um, and even if you want to become a lecturer, it's very easy to you or even a teacher. I think we actually have, I think you might only have to do like a, a small degree extra, like maybe a six month degree to actually become a teacher because we actually have all the math skills to be a secondary school teacher um, mm -hmm. already. So like it's very easy to switch about. But no, I definitely only my work has kind of taught me what I wanted to do for the time being. And, I, and don't be afraid to change. That's one of the big things. Like it's so easy to change. And like don't think that your first choice and your CEO is going to change your life because it doesn't have to change your life. And if you don't like it, you can switch. If you don't like DCU, you can switch colleges. If you want to stay in DCU and try a different course, it's very easy to do that as well. Yeah, exactly. And then whether you're interested in, as Fergus said, transferring a course once you get in, um, it can kind of depend on places available and grades and stuff. But like it is an option um, for people or equally, like if you're thinking about doing um, a PLC and something like there's often different routes that you can go to, to get where you want to be. And even when you get into college, you might know exactly the path that you want to take, but that's OK. And you'll you'll figure it out 
along the way. Um, so, I mean, you've covered so many kind of tips and, and a great piece of advice before we go. Any kind of one that, that you'll just um, say again for any student, one bit of advice for, for a sixth year at the minute who's maybe considering actuarial maths. Yeah, you have to like maths. <laughs> uh, very but um, yeah, honestly, don't be afraid. I hadn't a clue what actuarial maths was until I came into it. And honestly, until the end of fourth year, I didn't know really what it was. And I'm really grateful that I did stick with it, if that makes sense. Uh, I know a lot of first, the first few months, you're like, it is because in school, obviously, you have more than one subject, if that makes sense. So just because you like maths in school, that's because you're only doing it like for six or seven classes a week, if that makes sense. But when you mm -hmm. go into college, you're doing it maths constantly. You're doing maths, like different types of maths, obviously, but like it, it is a different situation. And I think especially for if you are going into an actuary, you're going to see a lot of courses who like, maybe don't even have lectures some days and you're sitting there from nine to five Monday to Thursday doing your stuff and everybody else is having a good time and don't get me wrong you, you, we do have a good time too but you're just like oh this is this is not what college life is supposed to be like but you, it's up to yourself to make it the most of it but I would definitely um just keep at it and I'd say after a year if you didn't like it then start thinking about it but like if you don't like it after two weeks I think you really do have to give it a longer time than that and mm -hmm. um, yeah, the 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 intro placement in DCU is brilliant. Um, everybody got an intro placement, and the majority of us got our actual actual jobs from our intro placement, if not all of us. And I think actuaries, even during this whole COVID crisis, every single one of us in our course is already employed. So like we're, it's a very employable job as well. So that's the practical side of it. For sure. So love maths. Be prepared to work hard, but you'll also, I imagine, reap the benefits once once you have and, and your internship and you've graduated and everything. Um, just before you go, Fergal, do you have, uh, and I asked you the same question earlier, one core memory from your time in DCU that, that you'd like to share? Um, yeah, uh, probably, it was probably with LGBTA, to be honest with you. Last year, it was actually happening this week now as well. There was this thing called Rainbow Week. So Rainbow Week's actually happening in DCU as you speak. And, um, so what day is today Wednesday so tomorrow actually would have been the actually a CC drag race tomorrow as well I'm not trying to sell it again but like I was up on the stage and I was introduced to everybody and um like we, were, we had raised money and like it was the it was in the venue in in DCU so like it, it's like this like really cool venue that's only been built quite recently and like it was just entirely packed out and the drag show is amazing and like that that whole night is probably like my one like do that way like you have your memories of like the best night out that was probably my best night even though like I literally was working until like 11 o'clock time I'm sure everything is right but as soon as yeah. I it was the best experience but yeah no like LGBTA definitely um if so like is the one thing I remember about DC yeah. like I honestly can't remember college like that's where the study <laughs> yeah. inside of it even though like you thought you'd never forget how hard it was but like as soon as you have something else it's it's amazing yeah yeah no it's nice to hear and especially when, when sometimes those the best memories aren't necessarily related to the course because it just it just backs it even further that it's so important to get involved kind of outside and and the course is one part of that jigsaw but really there's so many pieces that go into like creating a very memorable and, and fun college experience but that brings us up right to five o'clock Virgil thank you so much for this talk and um, for anyone watching back if you have any questions um let us know through through the the email that you, you got this link from today for the zoom student help at dcu.ie we'd be more than happy to answer any questions Virgil thank you so much again for your time it was lovely to speak to you and uh I'd say we'll have a surge now in actuarial maths applications uh, after yeah, this I hope talk. Put everybody Thank off. <laughs> no commission though, unfortunately. <laughs> thanks a million, Fergal. I'll talk to you soon yeah, and see you. everybody bye -bye. next week. Bye bye bye.